well and tries to come soon. Used to buy a new Vizio? At only $5.99, you don't have to make excuses. Go to Vizio.com and see how Vizio is making HDTV a possibility for everyone. Vizio. There's definitely not enough explosives. Well, yeah, it's that's an explosion a from the tank, but that's it's, a tank it's in reverse. With a oh. chef's hat on it. We can't. We don't have a chef's hat. Alright, so this is. Uh, What's going on here? Well, this is Kathleen, and she's pointing at a guy with a gun. Um, uh, it's is that CG, yeah. AC Slater on a tank, or is that the real AC Slater on a tank? Do we get Mario Lopez? Like Ray Barnholtz in the demo room with a copy of My Summer Vacation for PS3. That's a good idea. That's a good idea. So what the hell's going on over here? Wait, is this an explosion? Maybe like in the foreground over here with like some sweet depth of field out of focus shit, we'll have some grenades. AC Slater can ride on it. General AC Slater. Yeah. Dynamite. We don't have the dynamite hey guys, yet. We need to test. Sorry to interrupt the yeah. writer's meeting. Uh, am I pointing at a guy with a dick in a box? No, no, that's a pistol. Yeah, it doesn't gun. matter. I just don't um, do art very well. We gotta well. stop all this. The WGA decided to go on strike. The Women's Golfing Association? No. What, what does that have to do with The this? Writers Guild of America. Uh, we, the game segments will be fine, but, but the narrative stuff that yeah. we write... We're in a union? I didn't know that I joined any coloring? coloring. Is this like a guild? You can keep coloring, Patrick. Okay. Uh, uh, even though they haven't technically let us in yet, I think we need to support them and we've got to go on strike too. But, like... We have to go into reruns right now. Like, we're breaking the rules. Right now? Reruns have to start now. Treat all your toys. Can't get you anything nice. Uh, speaking of breaking things, I heard you guys kept breaking controllers when you're playing the game Call of Duty 4. Blow the charge. Preaching, preaching. Go, go, go. Clear. Remember that time when you I guys did, I did. insisted on playing on the. <laughs> Hard and difficulty. I didn't break any controllers, but I kicked some boxes around, and I generally got very angry. I know you did. You, you got way through. You got through it way faster than I did. I must have spent what five hours on that. I heard you on the other side of the office blowing up. <laughs> <laughs> but seriously, so when the guys from Activision and Infinity Ward came by, they insisted that we play the game on hard and difficulty, which is like the equivalent of heroic, mm -hmm. to enhance the fun. But I think there's a few points where that actually takes away from the fun because the game, yeah. like, I mean like the past games, it's, it's very scripted still. I mean I think you got more, and during the single player campaign, you've got more options this time. There's like a level where you can kind of determine which houses you want to scour through to find, uh, mm -hmm. to try and rescue this guy. But still, it's a lot of like, you go into an area, enemies pop up behind the same things. Whereas if you're playing, if you start off on the normal difficulty, you're going through for the, for the first time, you don't know what the, the parameters are, you don't know the exact way to solve it, and you don't know where the enemies are coming from. And that's kind of the better challenge, I thought. And it's kind of a backfire if they tell you, if they recommend that you play on the hard difficulty, because the hard difficulty, you will be repeating this stuff because you're learning it. You're like trying to find mm. the solution for the scene. If you're gonna play through it, play through it first on normal. 
Oh, definitely. And, and enjoy it. And then you challenge yourself. 95% of the time, the solutions are fun to find. The combat is really good. Absolutely. You know, Christmas was talking about how the guys always pop in the same spot. They always pop in the same spot, but especially in the open areas, where they move after that is not completely determined. I mean, right. Sometimes they'll, sometimes they'll flank. They, they use good maneuvering. They'll react to what you do. So if they you change up your tactics, then they'll change it up. But he's right in that it always starts off at the same thing. So that's the high point is when those when the when the scenes work, when mm -hmm. the solutions work, you get that great cinematic experience, but when they don't, the here like you said, the backfire is complete and total failure. So especially on the harder Yeah, yeah. And, and because you don't know what you're trying to do, you don't know what the solution points are. You don't know what's going to trigger the end of the the end or the I I win moment. Mm -hmm. And that's really a drag, especially when you're just pounding and pounding and pounding like, "Oh my god, I have to do this again." The objective variations I thought were really well done too, because you are destroying like tanks and you're calling in airstrikes, but it's always under different circumstances and you always are, like, sometimes you're on the offensive, sometimes you're like on the defense of trying to survive and it's all, it always feels like it's something fresh. Well, there's so much variety in the levels. I mean, cause you know, like the past games you play from different nations perspectives, mm -hmm. but in this one, you're kind of achieving, going after a similar goal and you're like leapfrogging all around the country. But uh, there was one level that I really liked where you, you spend the, f it's like after a helicopter crash and you're trying to escape uh, from enemy territory. So you spend the first part of the level trying to escape. And then uh, the next level, you're in a C-130 gunship, the most like, one of the most realistic levels I've ever seen in the game. Like if you go on YouTube or whatever mm -hmm. and watch footage from, you know, the Middle East or whatever, and then you play this level, you're like, wow, that's that's really realistic. And, you know, it's got the like the whitewashed graphics, and you mm -hmm. see the little guys running around. And mentally, it was such a change of pace. That was my fi favorite part of the game too. Yeah, is that it's such a change of pace, and it's happens right after this really intense series of firefights. Yeah, and then all of a sudden you're just chilling, like yeah. on, a, on a gunship, and it's like, oh, there's some guys. Kill him. Good kill, good kill. There's armed personnel running out of the church. Get that person. Get back on those guys. Okay, he's moving again. Kaboom. Yeah, well, and the, and the radio chatter is what yeah. sells it the most. Is, oh, yeah. oh, there's another one. Wasted him. <laughs> I'm, go. I'm thinking to myself, like, like, five minutes ago, I was watching these guys with blood and crap flying everywhere, and now it's like, Oh, there's an oh, frag them good. Yeah, and you can totally feel yourself getting relaxed, like relaxing yeah. after the firefight. Yeah, I mean, like, it's almost oh like God. I'm in this, like, I feel like now I'm in this air conditioned airplane, mm -hmm. just manning turrets, blasting guys, and everyone's relaxed, everyone's making like cracking jokes, you're blowing guys up. And, but it's just so crazy because you're actually defending your guys on the, on the ground who you were playing in the level before. So it's like such a, mm -hmm. you know, in terms of like trying to present what modern warfare is like, I mean, I think it does a cool job of showing like. The different sides of it. Yeah. You know, in the prior Call of Duties, they had the three disparate sections, but here, much like they have the C-130 part tied into the squad that was on the ground, mm -hmm. they also tie the two stories together well, so you feel like you're part of this global conflict. Right. Bravo 6, we're taking heavy fire on our position north of the overpass! Where the hell are you? We're almost there. Hang on! You know, people have seen how pretty the game looks, and you can see that in all the videos, but what you might not have gotten a chance to really get into is how good the sound is in the game. It, it totally shocked me to be inside buildings, especially in 5.1, and not just hear not just hear the gunfire and what's going on outside, but hear jets with the Doppler effect going over outside and occluded by the roof, like like mm -hmm. sounding one way as the jets are going by. I hear the Doppler effect. I walk through the doorway, and the sound is different because I'm no longer and enclosed. It, and it lasts as it flies over. The sound lasts and lingers for a full like 30 seconds to a minute right. after it goes by, just like you would hear like a, like the Blue Angel flying over. It's it's amazing sound design. It's also it also got to the point where by the end of the game, I didn't have to look at my weapon. I just I knew from from the sound of the fire pin and the report of the gun, I knew exactly what I was carrying all the time, just from that. Just total, complete polish, audio-visual, yeah. 60 frames per second. It would it would hitch a little bit in like the rougher like airstrikes and big firefights, but almost flawless, I think. Yeah, pretty amazing engine, pretty amazing engine. That's funny aside, I think we were all playing this the weekend that the Blue Angels were here. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> during the Fleet Week, so it kind of added to the authenticity. <laughs> that's true. And that might have been what you were hearing, but I'm not, I don't know. I wasn't. So that's what was rattling the windows. Oh man, I knew that Rocky was Rocky Like a Hurricane was playing the entire time. <laughs> that's an interesting music choice for them. <laughs>
Finally, we're together. I mean, together, like, it's us. I want you to know how special you are to me. I, I just feel so alive when I look at you. You know, I see things now that I didn't see before. I have a sense of clarity and purpose. It's like, it's like destiny, you know? I feel like I'm the one that's discovered beautiful and perfection. I want to climb to the top of Everest and say, I know what beauty is. I am in love with the Vizio. <laughs> Vizio. Somebody that's here should, if you honestly sat down and took the time out of work that that day to sit down, you should get one. Yeah, I did. And, and if you that's didn't, what I did. and you got a bum yeah, or somebody doing something, then it ain't going down like that because I'm not getting punked out of anything. I'd rather fight, go to jail, than have somebody cut in front of me. That's how serious it is with me. Wait, but, but people don't people don't want to buy it to play it? Man, people are buying this to put it on eBay and cash out, bro, bro. How much do you think it's going to go for? Two Man, racks. Five racks. Two racks. Three racks. Five racks. racks. Oh, Anything. The thing is, though, like, okay, so these lines right now are performed all over the country. Yeah. Right now. I mean, like, right, now. Still, right now. Right now. So if, if, if there's but this many people <laughs> waiting in line right now to sell it, what happens if, what happens if the majority of these systems end up on eBay? Right. They it all don't matter. Yeah, the demand's too high. I mean, the, are you guys worried at all about the market oversaturating? No. Everybody's worried about their pockets, bro. bro. Yeah. This is America. This is America. Free country. Do what you want to do. I am a businessman. I got like people with me standing in line that they are in their line and I gave them money. Okay. Some of it, some of it, I'm keeping one and I'm giving it to giving it to a poor family. Yeah, yeah. And the other ones, I'm cashing the them out. Hey, so you, got, you got the right list. Yeah, yeah, he really did the list. He honestly did the list and I was like, what are you doing? You work for him? He did the list earlier all right, all right. today. All right, one at a time, one at a time. Oh boy. When the line opens up at 8 a.m., you can either be there or you could be there. Oh, no. And oh, they no. don't know what's going to happen. Oh, no. Oh, I, I don't know, know what happened. They're going to know. Oh, if it's going to be like that, the then I'm going to go grab yeah, 30 yeah. of my friends, yeah. and there's going to be a lot of chaos yeah. over here. Yeah. And yeah. Ain't nobody going to get yeah. none. I'm I'll make a phone call, call, brother. Call. You make one, too. Call. I could have a lot of people. I, uh, I need to get on that list. <laughs> I need to, I need to be, but I need to, I, I, uh, I'm, I, no, I, uh, uh, I, you know, uh, 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 what time? I, I'm, I'm looking for one up. Okay. So what we need to do is, um, how much do I need to pay you to get a good spot on that list? What if I will give you $3,000 cash to be number five on the list? I'm number five on the list, actually. And it's, it's all right. It's funny how it works out, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Are you uh, selling it or keeping it? I'm keeping it. I'm not, I'm, I'm not selling it. I'm, I mean, you would, you'd rather have a PS3 than $3,000 cash right now. Deal for no deal? Um, actually, I'll, I'll keep the PS3. All right. Sorry. You're a good man. Okay. Nights, Nights on Saturn still look so good. Very few of the games that came out around that time still look as good as this does now. I mean, it is smooth. That ribbon effect is cool. Those backgrounds are really well designed. I mean, there are framework hiccups and stuff, but I think a lot of it, I think a lot of why it looks so good is because it's so smooth. I mean, I was just, I was messing around with the Wii one earlier, and you know, I like that just because it's more of it. Since 11 years have, has, you know, there's been an 11-year gap between the development of the first game and, the, and Journey for Dreams for Wii, a lot of new possibilities have, have become possible. Are there any specific things that uh, you can talk about now that, like ideas that you would have wanted to put in the original one for Saturn but couldn't and are finally able to realize now? So, の11年前は、ま、
親切設計とかそういうのが足りなくてあのそうだよ、ね、この物語を語るという意味であのより充実したものが作れるようになりましたしもちろんあのプラットフォームですね w i i という新しい機械によってこの世界の広がりですとかあの大空を飛ぶあの感覚ですとか、まあ、そういうところが、えー、飛躍的に良くなったと思います。Uh, one of the things that made the first night so awesome was the, was the soundtrack, which sounded festive, it sounded cutting edge because it was using like modern dance sounds at the time, and it, a lot of it still sounds like really fresh now.、Um, and the vocal tracks were really good as well.、Um, and especially the opening theme nights, I think that, along with the original Parents Dragoon theme and Grandia theme, were like the three best theme songs of the 32 bit era.、Um, Are you working with the same composers on the new soundtrack? Yes, I am. Hataya is a composer, and there is also a composer, Sasaki, who is a composer, and 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 who is a まあ、まず真っ先に2人に声をかけて、えー、またナイツサウンドを作ってくれないかというふうにお願いしています。The new Knights is not that much different than the original Knights in terms of theme. It's just that. No, no like story, theme, cutscenes, all that stuff is very similar. It's very much like playing up the dream concept in every part of the game. And、yeah. I kind of feel like they probably should have really gone off in kind of a new direction, like the Knights formula, but I don't know. Some of it, some of it feels a little bit. Too close to what I remember. I mean, because I mean, I mean, you only ever had the one game with it, right?、Yeah. There was never, like, you know. Eight broken, versions so,、yeah. of Knights, and it was a great game. And there was only like I don't know seven levels or something. So to have you know more of that is great, especially after this much time. Right, so、yeah. I'm cool with the whole the whole just basic basic game being like like the original. Some people might say it's too close to the original. Some people may or may not like the the new mini games. Boat Knights. Boat Knights. Is that, oh my god. <laughs> Knights was announced, and、uh, before it actually came out,、um, a lot of people, a lot of gamers kind of expected it to be Sega's answer to like then rival Nintendo's Super Mario 64.、Um, how did you feel about that? Did, did you think that was kind of like an unfair expectation when you were just trying to do your own thing? まあ、ナイツっていうのは他にないあの空を飛ぶタイプのゲームであの他と比べる対象物がないようなあのユニークなタイトルなんてあの特に他と比べてあのどこという気持ちは持ってないです。Was the Sega Saturn hardware so difficult that it would be hard for us to, it would be impossible to expect like a port of the original Knights? Sega Saturn という hard was すごい特殊な hard だったので、なかなかバーチャルコンソールみたいにポーティングするのはすごく難しい。Is that、um, applicable to just about any Sega Saturn, or is it more ap- applicable to 3D Saturn titles? Because if it was, t- it was originally designed as the ultimate 2D machine, so would like 2D games be relatively easy to port, but 3D games are 
problem. そんなこともないですねだからあのセガサターンもうタイトルにもよると思うんですけどあの、まあ、移植しやすいふうにあのプログラムを書いてるあのソフトは、まあ、実際あのコンバートできてるタイトルとかもありますしあの、まあ、ナイツの場合はあの当時中さんがメインプログラマーでもうハードの性能を引き出そうとすごいあのかなり。特殊なプログラムを組んでますので、yeah. より一層ナイスの場合はあのボーディングが難しい。Alright, so it's been 11 years since the original Knights first came out on Saturn.、Uh, what made this the right time to bring Knights back? そうですね。あのじゃあ,あのオリジナルナイツを作った後もあの何度も、えー、な次のナイツを作りたいっていう気持ちは持ってまして、で、まあ、タイミングを見てあのセガに。アプローチはしてたんですけども、あのまあ、Wii というプラットフォームが登場したことと、えー、あとそうですねあのソニックフランチャイズあの私ずっとしばらくソニックフランチャイズのタイトルを作ってたんですけどもやっぱりソニックをこう盛り上げていかなきゃいけないっていう、まあ、一つの責任がありましたので,で、まあ、それが、まあ、今ソニックフランチャイズタイトルがすごく充実してきたことで私にもナイスを作るチャンスがまた巡ってきた。It's interesting that they kind of waited for the Wii to do Knights because the game doesn't really use the, the motion controls that much.、Yeah. I mean, you, there's that option if you want to play by like pointing at the screen and like showing him where to go,、yeah. but that's kind of silly. That's like not the way to play.、Like yeah. The default is just playing like you used to, except you, know, you use the remote for doing your acrobatics. So, I mean, it really it, it doesn't need that. And it's like it's more going for the kind of audience that is getting the Wii rather than the actual technology of the Wii. Yeah. Well, I hope that, I hope that it does, the game does well enough for them to, to conjure up a sequel, you know, within the next three years or something, because that would be cool. I mean, they had no problem beating Sonic to death, you know, and there, there's plenty of Sonic games on the horizon, so hopefully, you know, they can invest a little time into making some more Knights games, you know. Am I even going to be able to play Crisis with an ATI video card? No. No? <laughs> it, it's like, I don't know, 15 frames a second or something. The price of entry is like, I would say at least 8,800, you know.、Um, you can go to like 7,800 or something, but it's gonna, you're going to ha have an issue. But then don't even do ATI,、uh, it's just not suited for the game. Is it not worth, it, worth playing it, or is the game still good enough that. I think it's worth waiting, because it's kind of like. I don't know if there's some movie you really anticipated and、yeah. it was like a special effects showcase. Sure. And you knew you could watch it on like some busted ass, you know, tube TV, or you could wait however long and then watch it on like an HD screen or something, you know? It's kind of like, it's important.
mean, if you play it, whatever, next year at some point, yeah. it's still going to look better than anything out. Right. I'm confident in that. I mean, everything we've seen for the big games of 2008, nothing looks as good. But when you take in the scope of everything, mm -hmm. uh, the interactivity of everything, uh, the way that, you know, I mean, light passing through trees, the way that light's filtering through waters of different quality, like if you're in a muddy-ass river or if you're in a clean bay or something, next year I don't see anything rivaling it. Graphics are one thing, but that's not what draws you and I to a game like like this. It's it's really about the open world and being able to tackle objectives in many different ways, any way that you see fit, and playing the game in a number of different ways as well. Right. A couple things here. We can't talk about the game after a certain point. And that's this because, has to because do because there's an embargo. They're just not going to let us talk. Embargoes about it. and stuff. Yeah. And that's difficult because you really, I think, to to look at this game the right way, you have to approach it holistically. With the stipulation that we we're just talking about the first two thirds of the game, maybe sure. one half of the game. Um, yeah, that that everything about that gameplay makes it fantastic. But to say like I, you can't dismiss the graphics. Its style is substance insofar as you're supposed to be somewhere. It wants to put you in this place and make you feel like you're you're really there. And what happens then is that when visually that illusion is complete, where you're not thinking like okay. This is a game world and this kind of object does this, but you got this, this complete impression that, okay, this it's is a, a satisfying illusion, I'm in this world. And all the things that you do then become, I think, they, they become more interesting and more exciting, you know? Because it's almost instinctual, because you're reacting to the environment and because the environment is so alive with options mm -hmm. that you just can attack it any way that you want. In Call of Duty, you're talking about how, hey, this was, remember this awesome part where the helicopter came in and tore up the building and fell apart and the guys, you know, they killed the guys and this and that. And here, when you talk about it, your experience is more like, well, I knew there was so, I knew there were so many guys in this enclave and I did not want to fight them all. So I went inside of this building and I stuck C4 on all the walls. And then I started knocking stuff around, creating noise, drew them in there, you know, and then I put my cloaking on, so one of the nano suit parameters. Uh, slipped out the back door and then blew the whole thing up. Um, and then again, the graphics come into play because when you blow it up, the entire place collapses. And then on the, the, the bigger spectrum, it could be, you know, more on the GTA side, it would be like, well, I decided I have. X number of optional objectives and I decided right. to go over here and do this or I decided to get to it by boat or by road or by truck or by a tank. You know, every time you play you can do something entirely different and the experience is going to feel different because of it. It's so natural and the ecology changes. I mean, we've seen the snow levels later on, but mm -hmm. other than that, I mean, it's been just like looking pretty much like Far Cry. As you move inland or something, everything just starts to gradually change. And so it's not just the palm groves and stuff. You move into, you know, banana plantations and then mangrove swamps and big grassy plains, right. you know, valleys, you know, surrounded by, you know, the mountains and stuff. And even that deciduous forest in some parts of the island and even though we're talking small changes, we're not like, although there is an ice level in this game, the difference between fire world, <laughs> right, ice fire world, world, upside down yeah. world or whatever, yeah, yeah. it's like a really nice uh, organic variety. There, there's some, you know, there are issues involved in it. Part of it's the fallout of ha when you have that kind of environment and you have AI. It's has to understand its environment and the more refined the more limited the scope of your environment the easier it is to make it do smart things right exactly. and like fear is a perfect example of it. it has you know phenomenal ai and it has an environment that's just made precisely to facilitate it doing those smart things exactly. but now when you, you've got this environment where you can be behind them you can run full speed at them go to strength and super jump over their heads there's a lot of room for it to go wrong sure. so occasionally it will the old stuff you, sh you see someone on the hill you start shooting them and he's like, 
uh, uh, he gets hit, but then he just kind of goes back to like, it's yeah, I'm just chilling, getting hit. Sometimes it will be like there's a switch, like Splinter Cell, you know, where it's aware of you or it's not aware of you, and there, or it's like not aware of you, but it's like looking for you, and it's kind of just does generic stuff. It's not looking to see if there's blood on leaves and if there's a branch that you broke here in the way that, that Crytek was saying it would, you know? So it's not as smart as they made it out to be initially. Well, not that they, that. You know, maybe we'll have to talk about this after the embargo. But yeah, there's a there's a lot to be a lot of questions I think I have. But so for you know the strengths of the AI, I mean there will be circumstances where you just cloak and then they're still looking around you, you know, and it and it seems just right. You get that perfect tension where they're going just by you. I've had you know circumstances where like even three and four prong pincher tactics, where you stir up everyone, and instead of them going to just these fixed points and posting up and, and having a firefight from there. You have to just continually check every direction because they will be coming around from all sides. So we have so many of these shooters and these different subgenres all coming out at the same time. Sure. It's a perfect time to just, you just play one day, one day you play one, next day you play another, and you can't help but compare them, you know? Not necessarily for better or worse, but for very distinct styles of making shooters, you know. And then Call of Duty will be very like, you're in this one area and the guys are going one direction and they're looking for you and they'll pass or something like this. Here, they're persistent and they'll continue to dog you and, and it's just great. Then you just all of a sudden pop out of the bush behind them invisible, grab them by the neck and then throw them into their friends. There are definitely levels in in the first part of the game that are among my favorite now in any FPS. I mean, where I can, where I'll like want to refer the, to refer to them. And it's hard because it's just a PC game, and of course, like 360 is another big platform for shooters. And when all the people in the office and you know message boards and stuff have discussions about what good shooters in each subgenre are, you know, what constitutes and stuff, I really think you have to play. However good it is in the end, you have to play Crisis to be. It, an informed participant in these discussions from this point forward. It shows so many possibilities, you know, even if it's not all there yet. Like, there's so much that it does that you just have to sort of experience it firsthand to, if you want to talk about them, and it sounds like you know what you're talking about. <laughs>
No cameras today. Sorry, sorry. Close set, close set. Sorry, no cameras today. All right, you gotta go. Go. That's it. That's it.